2021 at 7.30 p.m. via teleconference. Prayer will be offered by City Clerk Sue Lovering and Alderman at Large Brandon Laws will lead us in the Pledge to the Flag. Almighty God, we have the high honor and the serious duty to manage the affairs of our beloved city. Fill us, O oh God, with the spirit of unity and understanding, which enables us to face our multiple problems with a serene mind, with justice and charity for all, so that any and all decisions made by us will always be for the betterment and greater happiness of all our fellow citizens. So help us, God. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Thank you. As president of the Board of Aldermen, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, and in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12, pursuant to Executive Order 2020-4, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there is no physical location to, to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, I am confirming that we are providing public access to the meeting by telephone with additional access possibilities by video or other electronic means. To access Zoom, please refer to the agenda or the city's website for the meeting link. To join by phone, dial 1-929-205-6099. The meeting ID is 874-8255-1110. The passcode is 999999. The public may also view the meeting via channel 16. We previously gave notice to the public of the necessary information for accessing the meeting through public postings. Instructions have also been provided on the city of Nashua's website at nashuanh.gov and publicly noticed at City Hall and the Nashua Public Library. If anyone has a problem accessing the meeting via phone or channel 16, please call 603-821-2049 and they will help you connect. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting via the methods mentioned above, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. Let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance when each member states their presence. Please also state whether there is anyone in the room with you during this meeting which is required under the right to know law. Would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman O'Brien. I am present. I can hear the proceedings and I am alone. Alderman Clee. I am here. I can hear the proceedings. I am alone in this room at the moment. Alderwoman Kelly. I'm here, I'm alone and I can hear everyone. Alderman Dow. Yes, I'm present, I can hear the proceedings, and I'm alone. Alderman Karen. Yes, I'm here, I'm alone and I can hear everyone. Alderman Clemens. I am here, I'm by myself and I can hear everyone. Alderman Lopez. Present, I'm by myself, I can hear and see everyone. Alderman Tenza. I am present, I'm by myself, and I can hear everyone. Alderwoman Lou. I'm present, I'm here with a couple of family members, and I can hear everyone. Alderman Jetty. I'm here alone, and I can hear the proceedings. Alderman Schmidt. I am present, alone, and can hear everyone. Alderman Laws. I'm here, I'm alone, and I can hear everyone. Alderman Cleaver. Alderman Harriet Gathright. I am present, I'm in this room alone, and I can hear everyone. Alderman Wilshire. I'm here, I'm alone, and I can hear everyone. Alderman Cleaver did let us know that he was unable to join us this evening. We have 14 in attendance. Thank you. Also in attendance is uh, Mayor Donches and Corporation Counsel Steve Bolton. Mayor, did you wish to address the board this evening? Uh, yes, thank you, Madam President. Well, first, I wanted to say how sorry I am that the about the passing, the death of one of our young students in an automobile accident. 
uh, recently. Uh, I know that his family is grieving and of course no one who has not gone through that really can I'm sure imagine what is like for a parent. Uh, but as but as the uh, mayor of the city and I, I know other board of aldermen, I mean, I extend the community's deepest condolences. Uh, it's just a very, very tragic loss when a long, young person like this is, uh, you know, passes away. So I'm very sorry about that. Um, on other issues, Madam President, the COVID-19 situation is remains similar to where it's been the last few weeks. The number of cases is up from uh, a month ago, but uh, now a little few, few less cases than last week. Right now we have about 235 active cases. A week ago that was over 300, uh, but we saw 198 new cases arise last week. Uh, that was up, up 10 from the week before. Uh, and we are the positivity rate in Nashville remains at 8.5%, which is much higher than we'd like. So we still need to be careful about the pandemic. It's still dangerous. I'm just talking with someone tonight who's a uh, 20 some year old son has gotten COVID and is really sick from it. So this idea that uh, young people can't, uh, can't, you know, it can't uh, contract a positive or a, a serious case serious positive case of COVID-19 is not really true. Yes, many people do okay with the disease, but others do not. So this is still a dangerous situation. And people should continue to exercise caution with the mask, social distancing, and all the cautionary measures. Um, I wanted to mention uh, that City Hall, you will get a report, I think, Madam President, after I'm through from uh, Ms. Kleiner and uh, Ms. Deshea regarding the improvements to the automobile registration area. Uh, those are about complete. I think you'll see a significant transformation, uh, making the area much more COVID pandemic resistant, resistant to the next pandemic, and also a real upgrade in terms of the just the look of the whole place. Uh, we expect that the automobile registration will be able to move downstairs from the third floor next Monday. Uh, we will continue to operate by appointments. That seems to be going very well, but people will be going to the first floor to register their cars. And of course, uh, City Clerk Sue Lovering and her staff will move up to the third floor uh, while, and then the renovations of the City Clerk's area will begin. Uh, the Renovations of the assessing area are about complete and uh, those should be open soon, soon as well. Uh, Madam President, I wanted to mention one of the issues on the agenda tonight, which is the Affordable Housing Trust Fund, that is uh, R21118. Uh, this is uh, the creation of a, a trust fund to hold affordable housing contributions. Uh, this is just the beginning. Uh, we all, we know that affordable housing is a serious significant problem for us here in Nashua, a vacancy rate of less than 1%. Uh, of course, houses have also gone up uh, significantly in value. Uh, so we, we need to begin to do everything we can and um, we'll be proposing other steps as well. But the initial, the initial contribution into this trust fund is $30,000, which is the last three years of $10,000 a year contributions that we receive from Clock Tower as part of the so called the HUD HODAG grant that was uh, given to the city, earned by the city, won by the city uh, back in the late 80s when I was mayor of Epore that established a clock tower at that time. Uh, so uh, I'm sure you all have indicated uh, your support for that and I know you understand the uh, seriousness of this issue, but I, I wanted to mention it because I think it is an, an important step forward. I wanted to report to the Board of Aldermen, Madam President, regarding a fraud issue that has occurred uh, with respect to uh, one of the contracts that the city uh, is a party to. And it involves the contract for the moving of the health department from their building on Mulberry Street over to uh, Main Street at the Oddfellows building. Uh, it's, it appears, and we're still investigating, so we'll give you more information uh, later, 
but what it appears that what happened is that someone hacked into the vendor, the, the, the vendor is from Massachusetts, com computer hacking into uh, their, their system. It appears that this is what happened, at least so far, and determined as a result of that hacking uh, that there was a contract, determined the name of the person at the vendor that uh, was dealing with the city and determined her, her um, email address. Then altering, then altered the email address by one character, adding an S to the to the email address, and began uh, approaching uh, accounts payable for the for payment, and changing the uh, bank to which they uh, were seeking to have a so-called ACH transfer. Uh, eventually, uh, accounts payable made that transfer to the fraudulent vendor. Uh, and the amount is $41,000 uh, approximately. Now, the city is not out the money at this point uh, because, again, we're still investigating. Uh, there is legal department, of course, is involved, and there's some uh, case law suggesting that if the, uh, the first cause is the hacking of, by, of, of uh, a party because of um, you know, in, insufficient security, that they may, the, may be the one that suffers the loss. But uh, this is not a final determination or a final report, but I just wanted to let you know that I heard about, I called you, Madam President, uh, the day after I learned about this. And uh, that was uh, you know, a week or 10 days ago, but I wanted to tell the Board of Aldermen as well. Um, again, we will update you and give you more complete information when we get it. Uh, the, Another item, Madam President, the city's equalization ratio is out. Uh, 83% uh, is the city's equalization ratio given by the state DRA. This means that on average, the average property in Nashua is uh, assessed at 83% of fair market value. Uh, now, this is of course as a result of the appreciation that's occurred in real estate values uh, over the last several years. And as you know, we're in the middle of a revaluation. Our plan here is to, all houses have been viewed, all properties have been viewed from the exterior only because of COVID. But now that people are beginning to get vaccinated, now that we have masks, so we think that it's important to offer people the opportunity, if they wish, no one has to do it, uh, offer people the opportunity of, a, of an interior inspection. So that should be beginning next month. Now it will circulate uh, in the same way that the uh, exterior visits did, uh, first with Ward 1, working through the wards from uh, the north end to the south end. Again, if anybody does not feel comfortable, either for any reason, COVID-19 or anything else, uh, they don't certainly don't have to agree to a visit, but if they do feel comfortable and think it would help uh, uh, in terms of their uh, assessment, uh, that opportunity will be available. And we think given that we haven't done a full measure in less since 1991, that we really don't want to uh, do this, finish this uh, revaluation without those uh, in-person visits. Um, finally, the uh, barriers, as you see, have been painted by our artists, uh, by um, by Positive Street Art and Beyond Walls. They did a great job, I think, and we are, now the barriers are being, uh, the expanded outdoor dining is being uh, put in place and that should be a great season. I know that uh, we were down there last weekend and there was a two and a half hour wait at one of the restaurants for the outdoor seating. So I think that will go well this season and I wanna thank the artists for uh, their efforts. Uh, and I, unless there are questions, Madam President, that uh, concludes my remarks. Okay, at this point, I think I will call on Director Kleiner to give her um, update on the building renovations. Good evening and thank you, Madam President, members of the board. Um, so tonight I'm joined by Jennifer Deshaies, the risk manager. Uh, Ms. Deshaies and I have worked on this project with a team of individuals um, since last June. Uh, it has certainly had its uh, share of 
complex challenges, um, everything from structural changes when you're dealing with a building of, of this age um, to material uh, challenges due to COVID-19. Um, but in June, um, it was a, the building was assessed uh, by the Emergency Operations Center. Um, and we realized that in order to comply with CDC social distancing protocols, significant building modifications were required in motor vehicle, tax, assessing, uh, and the city clerk's office. Uh, Dennis Myers was hired as the architect, uh, designed uh, the bid set drawings and the specifications for the modifications. Um, following a RFP process, uh, the finance committee uh, did approve a contract with DL King and Associates uh, back on September 16th. Um, so at this point, uh, we'd like uh, Ms. Deshaies to take you through a little bit of a short vir virtual tour of, this, of the area. The first area we're going to take a tour of is the assessing department. What you are looking at is the assessing kiosk. The kiosk consists of three transaction windows. One of the windows is ADA accessible and also serves for transferring bulk information back and forth from employee to citizen. We are now moving into the conference room, which is direct access from the hallway to allow staff to meet with residents. This is a staff area of the department. And you are currently viewing the staff side of the kiosk. The new area allows for a better layout of workstations, as well as a better overall use of the space. This next area that we're going to visit is the motor vehicle department. This is a citizen side where we have eight transaction windows, with one of them being ADA accessible. Each transaction area is separated by glass and meets social distancing and security protocols. The employee side includes individual workstations separated by, yeah, uh, by glass, and again, meeting social distancing and security protocols. The layout provides not only a secure area, but a better use of the available space. So as part of this uh, project, uh, you've had a number of modifications. Um, we have widened the rotunda door leading to the motor vehicle area. We have new sprinkler systems within the motor vehicle area. They have uh, new uh, workstations within the motor vehicle area to provide our staff um, with a much product, more productive workspace. Um, presently, uh, DL King, our contractors, are in the tax area, which we expect to be finished by the end of the month. As the mayor noted, um, we will be moving the motor vehicle staff uh, from the City Hall Auditorium 
starting this Friday, and we expect them to open Monday morning in their new space. Um, at that time, we will be working with the city clerk and her staff to relocate them to the city hall auditorium. And we will begin the final phase of the construction. Um, despite the talent of our videographers, I have to say um, it, a video can't do the area justice. Um, I have to thank Dennis Myers, our uh, architects. Uh, the area is not only secure, providing social distancing, but it is really breathtaking um, when you take a look at it. And we hope that it will serve our residents well. So that concludes your, your update. Thank you so much. And thank you, Jen, appreciate your, your effort on this too. Uh, did anyone have any questions for the mayor or any response to the remarks of the mayor? Seeing none. Recognition period. There is none. Reading minutes of previous meetings. There being no objection, I'll declare the minutes of the Board of Aldermen regular meeting and special meetings of March 23rd and April 8th, 2021. The accepted placed on file and the reading suspended. Communications requiring only procedural actions and written reports from liaisons. Communication has been received from Kimberly Kleiner, Administrative Services Director regarding Board of Aldermen meeting of March 23rd, 2021, and Donna Graham, Legislative Affairs Manager, regarding communication received from the public. There being no objection, I'll accept the communications and place them on file. Communications have been received from Larry D. Goodhue, Chief Executive Officer of Penichuk Corporation, regarding Penichuk Corporation quarterly report to the sole shareholder for the quarter ended September 30th, 2020, and a communication regarding the annual meeting of sole shareholder. There being no objection, I'll assign the communications to the Penichuk Water Special Committee. Um, period for public comment relative to items expected to be acted upon this evening. If anyone wishes to speak, you have a three minute limit um, and please try to uh, not repeat what someone else has said. Okay, who do we have? Mr. Keating? Yes, uh, my name is uh, Bob Keating from uh, uh, Five Coburn Woods and a member of Grand Estate uh, Organizing uh, Project. I want to speak on two items. Uh, the first that I spoke at the uh, special uh, meeting of the aldermen uh, last week. is very appreciative of this important step forward, as the mayor has said, about the, uh, the housing trust. Uh, I appreciate the, the, uh, the sponsorship of uh, uh, Alderwoman uh, Kelly and uh, 14 uh, uh, all the persons that have uh, endorsed it. Uh, I think in the metaphor of this season, I think it's an important seating um, and that uh, I look forward to, uh, you know, working and with other groups to, to help uh, nurture this along for, for every uh, new house that we bring on board for, uh, for people of uh, low to moderate uh, income. Uh, I think it's a benefit. So again, I appreciate what uh, uh, has happened. Uh, with this and as I said look forward to the future. Uh, the second item is that I like to uh, uh, speak in support of the uh, resolution in regards to the uh, uh, <clears throat> support of the, the nonpartisan fair redistricting. Appreciate uh, Alderwoman uh, Schmidt for bringing this forward and again the endorsements of many of the uh, uh, of the older persons. Uh, I think that this uh, uh, piece, this resolution, which has been endorsed, I believe by 40 plus now uh, uh, communities within the state will provide a more fair, uh, open and transparent way. And rather than being uh, swayed by redistricting, uh, depending upon what the, uh, uh, the winds of, uh, of the state house uh, might be at a particular moment in time. And I think uh, that it's, uh, uh, it's a good step toward uh, democracy. So I uh, ask your consideration for that. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Wishing to give public comment? Um, my hand is up. I'm sorry, I didn't see you. Go, go ahead, Ms. Ortolano. Hi, Lori Ortolano, 41 Berkeley Street. 
Um, just commenting on the communications for the assessing office update. Um, you know, I'm a proponent of uh, allowing people access to the office for, with appointments the same day if um, information is available. Um, it was a walk-in office and I think that's pretty helpful. And I'm also supportive of appointments longer than 15 minutes. If that time is available and the slots aren't booked, um, there's openings for people to have more than 15 minutes. Um, I, I'm disappointed in the customer service area because you took away all the counter space for people to come in there to set up their notebooks or do some research. Um, if they collected some property record files and they wanted to go through them, there's really, there's so much less counter space than there was in the old office that um, it's pretty disappointing that that's been eliminated. And other assessing offices I have been in uh, maintain a lot of counter space for people to be able to spread out a little bit and do some research. So um, I wish we hadn't lost all that space. I'm not certain where we're supposed to go if we get a manual or files to look at, you know, what are we supposed to do? Can you not go in and do that anymore? Um, do you have to be booked into a conference room? It just seems really unfortunate that that was the layout. And I really had no idea that's the way it was gonna work. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to give public comment? Seeing none, communications requiring final approval. Communication has been received from Mayor Jim Donches regarding the multi-year contract award for the backup internet line. Alderman Laws. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I move to accept, place on file, and award the contract for backup internet line to Consolidated Communications Incorporated, oh, excuse me, <clears throat> CCI, in the amount of $12,635.64. Funding will be through Department 120 Telecom Fund 55109 Telecommunications Telephone Voice by roll call. Thank you. You've heard the motion. Is there discussion on that motion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman O'Brien. Yes. Alderman Clee. Yes. Alderman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Dow. Yes. Alderman Karen. Yes. Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Tenza. Yes. Alderman Lou. Yes. Alderman Jetty. Yes. Alderman Schmidt. Yes. Alderman Lars. Yes. Alderman Harriet Gathright. Yes. Alderman Wilshire. Yes. We have 14 yeas and zero nays. And that motion carries. Petitions. There are none. Nominations, appointments, and elections. Appointments by the mayor to the Honorable Board of Aldermen. I have this day appointed to the Cultural Connections Committee, Margaret Lorette of 4 Cimarron Drive, Nashua, and Paul Shea of 102 Toll Street, Nashua, for terms to expire February 1st, 2024, and April 20, excuse me, April 1st, 2024, respectively, and Lindsay Rinaldi of 704 Belmont Street, Belmont, Massachusetts, to the Nashua Arts Commission for a term to expire April 1st, 2024, and respectfully request that these appointments be confirmed. There being no objection, I'll accept the appointments by the mayor as read and refer them to the Personnel Administrative Affairs Committee. Reports of committees. There being no objection, I will declare the report of the March 22nd, 2021 Budget Review Committee to be accepted and placed on file. There being no objection, I will declare the report of the March 24th, 2021 Committee on Infrastructure be accepted and placed on file. There being no objection, I will declare the report of the April 5th, 2021 Personnel Administrative Affairs Committee be accepted and placed on file. There being no objection, I will declare the report of the April 7th, 2021 Finance Committee be accepted and placed on file. There being no objection, I will declare the report of the April 8th, 
2021 budget review committee be accepted and placed on file. There being no objection, I would smooth, uh, suspend the rules to allow for the oral report of the Human Affairs Committee meeting that was held Monday, April 12, 2021 regarding proposed resolution 21-122. All the woman, Kelly. Thank you, President Wilshire. Um, yes, so our committee met last night. I can't believe that was last night. And uh, we had uh, Assistant Chief Buxton come and, and speak to this legislation. Uh, we unanimously passed it, uh, but it is 1.5 million to help the firefighters continue to ramp up in our uh, vaccinations for COVID-19. Um, and so obviously everyone here can understand the urgency of that and we appreciate them uh, pitching in as we get through the end of this pandemic. Thank you, Alderman Kelly. The confirmation of Board of Aldermen's appointments. Cable Television Advisory Board. There being no objection, I'll confirm the new appointment of Cole Morgan, 20 Lock Street, Nashua to the Cable Television Advisory Board with a term to expire March 31st, 2024. Is Mr. Morgan with us this evening? Hello. You will be uh, sworn in by Corporation Council. Mr. Morgan, would you raise your right hand, please? You solemnly swear that you will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all of the duties incumbent upon you as a member of the Cable Television Advisory Board of the City of Nashua, according to the best of your abilities and agreeably to the rules and regulations of the City Charter and the Constitution and laws of the State of New Hampshire, so help you God. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you for stepping forward to do this. Appreciate it. Citizens Advisory Commission. There being no objection, I'll confirm the reappointment of Lisa Torreno of 11 Berkeley Street, Nashua to the Citizens Advisory Commission with a term to expire October 1st, 2023. I don't, is, uh, Oh, she's a reappointment. I don't think we're swearing her in tonight, right? In Energy and Environment Committee. There being no objection, I'll confirm the new appointments of Taylor Berry, 33 Wilman Ave, Nashua, and Dante Castellano of 4 by Centennial Drive, Nashua, to the Energy and Environment Committee with terms to expire April 30th, 2022. Did I see um, Mr. Castellano on this evening? Yes. Or Taylor Barry. Okay. Then you will be taking the oath of office. Each of you, please raise your right hand. Do you each solemnly swear that you will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties incumbent upon you as a member of the Energy and Environment Committee of the City of Nashua, according to the best of your abilities? and agreeably to the rules and regulations of the city charter and the constitution and laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help you God. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Congratulations to both of you and thank you for your willingness to step up and be part of this committee. We're excited to see what you, what you have to bring. Thank you. Historic District Commission. There being no objection, I will confirm the following reappointments to the Historic District Commission. William Slavinsky, 46 Berkeley Street, Nashua, with a term to expire June 30th, 2022. Mary Ellen McKay, 9 Webster Street, Nashua, and Robert Vorbeck of 58 Manchester Street, Nashua, both with terms to expire December 31st, 2023. And Christopher Barrett of 44 Abbott Street, Nashua, with a term to expire January 31st, 2024. Are any of those individuals here this evening? Okay, I don't see any of them. Zoning okay. Board of Adjustment. There being no objection, I will confirm the reappointment of Nicholas Kanakis, 159 Main Street, Nashua, to the Zoning Board of Adjustment with a term to expire September 11th, 2023. And I don't believe he's here this evening. Unfinished Business Resolutions. 
Second reading of resolution R21118, establishing a housing expendable trust fund funded by appropriations and making a supplemental appropriation of $30,000 into the expendable trust fund. Alderwoman Kelly. Thank you, President Wilshire. I would like to move for final passage of R21118 by roll call, and I would like to speak to it, please. Alderwoman Kelly. Uh, thank you. I know the mayor uh, mentioned this piece of legislation. We had a good conversation around it at committee, um, been very passionate about this. And as everyone uh, spoke about at the committee level, this is step one, um, just to get it open and have the conversations and then continue to build um, affordable housing. As we saw with the housing report that we got earlier this year, this is a critical need for Nashua and I'm um, thankful for everyone's support on this and looking forward to continuing the good work here. Motion before us is for final passage. Is there discussion on that motion? Alderman, Alderman Clay. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, I, I want to add my voice to um, how excited I am about this. Uh, myself, um, Alderman uh, Schmidt and Alderman Cleaver had met with a community group and they were um, very interested in this type of um, trust fund and so on to kind of get it started and to help. And as we keep talking about, this is kind of the baby. This is the, the seedling that we're starting this trust fund from. Um, the, the group that we met with, I think they, they want more and I think we'll get there, but we are going to have to take baby steps. So um, I am extremely excited that we're getting this started and everyone that had everything to, to do with it, um, from uh, Director Marchant's office, et cetera. Um, this is really, really exciting and I'm glad that we've got it started. Thank you. Anyone else? Alderman Lopez. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I'm also very excited about this. I'm appreciative of uh, Alderman Kelly and the attention that she was able to bring to this. Um, housing is a huge problem in our city. It's an urgent problem. We need to do a lot. This is a good start. We have a lot more work to do and Baby steps are good, but we really, really need to meet the need as it presents today. There are people tonight who will be unsheltered, who will be homeless. And a lot of that tracks back to the housing quality and their access to um, you know, what kind of places they can stay. So there's a lot of work for us to do here and I think we should get started. Thanks. Anyone else? Seeing none, the motion is for final passage of resolution 21118. Would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman O'Brien. Yes. Alderman Clee. Yes. Alderwoman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Dowd. Yes. Alderman Karen. Yes. Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Tanza. Yes. Alderwoman Lou. Oh, here's. Yes. Alderman Jetty. Yes. Alderman Schmidt. Yes. Alderman Laws. Yes. Alderman Harriet Gathright. Yes. Alderman Lucia. Yes. You are 14 yeas and zero nays. That motion carries resolution 21118 is declared duly adopted. Second reading of resolution R21120 relative to the transfer of $755,000 from Department 194 Contingency, account 70112 Contingency for Educational Priorities to various school department accounts. Alderman Clemens. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I would uh, move for final passage of R21120 by roll call. You've heard the motion. Is there discussion on that motion? No one? Okay. Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman O'Brien. Yes. Alderman Clee. Yes. Alderwoman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Dowd. Yes. Alderman Karen. Yes. Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Tenza. Yes. 
Alderwoman Lou? Yes. Alderman Jetty? Yes. Alderman Schmidt? Yes. Alderman Laws? Yes. Alderman Harriet Gathright? Yes. Alderman Wilshire? Yes. You have 14 yeas and zero nays. That motion carries and resolution 21-120 is declared duly adopted. Second reading of resolution R21-122 relative to the acceptance and appropriation of up to $1,500,000 from the state of New Hampshire Department of Health and Human Services for COVID-19 vaccination aid. Alderman Karen. Yes, I'd like to make a motion for final passage of R-21-122 by roll call. Motion is for final passage. Is there discussion on that motion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman O'Brien. Yes. Alderman Clee. Yes. Alderman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Dow. Yes. Alderman Karen. Yes. Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Tenza. Yes. Alderman Lou. Yes. Alderman Jetty. Yes. Alderman Schmidt. Yes. Alderman Laws. Yes. Alderman Harriet Gathright. Yes. Alderman Wilshire. Yes. You have 14 yeas and zero nays. And that motion carries. Resolution 21-122 is declared duly adopted. Second reading of resolution R21-125, supporting nonpartisan fair redistricting. Alderman Schmidt. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I move for final passage of R21-125 by roll call. And I'd like to speak to my move, please. Alderman Schmidt. Thank you. Um, every 10 years after our census, the state is required to uh, reapportion their districts. And in the past, it has been partisan at times. And to avoid that, we simply ask that uh, this be, a, we are supporting nonpartisan and fair redistricting as a, as a city. And I wanted to thank uh, Mr. Keating for coming and making a point of this. It is very important. Thank you. All right, uh, the motion is for final passage of resolution 21-125 by roll call. Further discussion on that motion, Alderman Klee. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, when um, Alderman um, Schmidt had brought this up and, and spoke to um, myself and uh, the other Alder reps, um, I was very on board with it. Uh, 10 years ago when they were doing the redistricting, one of the things that had happened was um, Ward 3 was they tried to pull us across the river um, into another town um, that's just not acceptable. Um, we should, Nashua should remain in Nashua and that's the way it should be. We should be, be represented by Nashua and I'm sure the Ward 3 citizens would not have wanted to be represented by someone from across the river. Um, it's just not the way it, it belongs. So um, I do appreciate that we're doing this and um, we need to make it a point that uh, Nashua will just stay within Nashua. Thank you. Anyone else? Motion is for final passage of resolution 21-125. Seeing no one, would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman O'Brien. Yes. Alderman Clee. Yes. Alderwoman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Dowd. Yes. Alderman Karen. Yes. Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Tenza. Yes. Alderwoman Lou. Yes. Alderman Jetty. Yes. Alderman Schmidt. Yes. Alderman Lawrence. Yes. 
Alderman Harriet Gathright. Yes. Alderman Wilshire. Yes. You have 14 yeas and zero nays. That motion carries and resolution 21125 is declared duly adopted. Unfinished business ordinances. Second reading of ordinance 02153, authorizing a stop sign on Shawnee Drive at its intersection with Conant Road. Alderman Chetty. I move for a final passage of ordinance 21-053 uh, by roll call and I would like to speak to it. Alderman Jetty. Uh, so one of our residents had a, uh, a near miss at the intersection of uh, Conant Road and Shawnee Drive and uh, was surprised uh, when he went back and looked that there was no stop sign on Shawnee Drive uh, and complained to the uh, Public Works Department and um, the traffic department went out and took a look and uh, agreed that a stop sign should be there on Shawnee Drive. And um, so the uh, Public Works Department contacted me and asked me to uh, sponsor this ordinance. And it, um, the Infrastructure Committee unanimously recommended final passage. And I, I hope that uh, my fellow aldermen will uh, vote for this as well. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Jetty. Discussion on Ordinance 2153. Seeing none, the motion is for final passage. Would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman O'Brien. Yes. Alderman Cleese. Yes. Alderman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Dow. Yes. Alderman Karen. Yes. Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Tenza. Yes. Alderman Lou. Yes. Alderman Jetty. Yes. Alderman Schmidt. Yes. Alderman Laws. Yes. Alderman Harriet Gathright. Yes. Alderman Wilshire. Yes. You have 14 yeas and zero nays. And that motion carries. Ordinance 2153 is declared duly adopted. Second reading of Ordinance 02154. No parking on Concord Street from Mount Pleasant Street North for a distance of 50 feet. Alderman Clay. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, I move to for final passage of 0-21-054 by roll call. And I'd like to briefly speak to my motion, please. Alderman Clay. Thank you so much. Um, this was brought to me by um, a constituent who lives um, on Mount Pleasant. Mount Pleasant is a, a one way in that area. So the only way of exi exiting that street is to go out to Concord Street. Trying to take a left um, can be very difficult at best, but makes it even worse when you can't see the traffic coming um, because of the, the cars that were parked there. Um, sadly, sometimes they parked a little too close to the intersection when they shouldn't. And um, even trying to um, put up a sign that would say not to do this uh, still created an, an issue. Recently with the um, new, um, I guess owners I would say of the old Red Cross building, the, there's been more traffic, more cars parked there and, and so on. It became quite dangerous. There were a, a number of near misses. I worked with public works who came out, looked at it, agreed, the street department agreed that this was hazardous. This did go through infrastructure and um, was also um, recommended for approval. So I uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else? Motion is for final passage of ordinance 21-54. Seeing no one, would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman O'Brien. Yes. Alderman Clay. Yes. Alderwoman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Dow. Yes. Alderman Karen. Yes. Alderman Clemens. Yes. 
Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Tenza. Yes. Alderman Lou. Yes. Alderman Jetty. Yes. Alderman Schmidt. Yes. Alderman Laws. Yes. Alderman Harriet Gathright. Yes. Alderman Wilshire. Yes. You have 14 yeas and zero nays. That motion carries and ordinance 2154 is declared duly adopted. Second reading of ordinance 02155, authorizing stop signs on the connector at its intersections with Concord and Manchester streets. Alderman Dowd. Madam President, I think I'm taking that one. Yeah. Oh, that's right, Alderman Cleese. Please take it, I'm a co-sponsor. <laughs> Thank you so much, um, Madam President. Um, this one was brought to me, um, much like what Alderman Jetty had mentioned, it was brought to me by Public Works. Um, they had had a number of complaints uh, that there were issues coming through that intersection. There was no stop sign. As you were coming from that, that little crossroad there um, by the uh, Fireman's uh, Memorial onto Manchester Street, there is a stop sign going the opposite direction to get onto um, onto Concord Street, but not towards Manchester Street. It is very difficult when you're driving up um, from the downtown area and it can be kind of a blind spot. So without a stop sign, there could be some real severe issues. And I, I can tell you firsthand that I've experienced some very close calls. So the um, street department and so on looked at it and decided that we do need a stop sign there and where Mount Pleasant School is right there, there's a crosswalk within feet of this. I think it's very important that we do have that stop sign there. Um, there could be some severe, severe injuries. So um, again, I would appreciate a positive on this. Thank you. The motion before us is for final passage of ordinance 2155. Is there any other discussion on that motion? Sorry about that, Madam President. No, you're good. I told you I'd probably forget. And I did. <laughs> no one else? Okay. Well, the motion is for final passage of Ordinance 2155. Would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman O'Brien? Yes. Alderman Klee? Yes. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Dow? Yes. Alderman Karen? Yes. Alderman Clemens? Yes. Alderman Lopez? Yes. Alderman Tenza? Yes. Alderman Lou? Yes. Alderman Jetty? Yes. Alderman Schmidt? Yes. Alderman Laws? Yes. Alderman Harriet Gathray? Yes. Alderman Wilshire? Yes. You have 14 yeas and zero nays. And that motion carries. Ordinance 21-55 20, is declared duly adopted. Second reading of Ordinance 02157, providing for a representation of the LGBTQ community on the Cultural Connections Committee. Alderman Lopez. Yes, I'd like to make a motion uh, to amend, um, actually, I think I have to make the motion to propose the ordinance. No, actually, um, I'd like to make a motion to amend uh, 02157 by replacing it with the goldenrod copy of amendments uh, made at the Personnel Administrative Affairs uh, Committee by roll call, and I'd like to speak to it. Alderman Lopez. Um, so the amendments that we made, uh, the current, um, the initial ordinance, um, was uh, enabling the addition of two representatives of the LGBTQ plus community um, to, for representation on the Cultural Connections Committee. And the amendment um, makes uh, an allowance for two additional uh, representatives to represent uh, deaf culture. So a few years ago when we first, um, I was actually chairing the Cultural Connections Committee at the time, we were having conversations about what our role was, what our relevance was, um, and how we could better uh, engage the community and make um, minority populations in the city more able to access uh, city government 
and we had we had chosen to change the name from uh, Ethnic Awareness Committee to Cultural Connections Committee to better reflect the intent of the committee. Um, it wasn't just to raise awareness, it was to actually connect uh, members of uh, cultures together. Um, and we had thought that in a, a city where you could have um, French Canadians who are a numerical minority, but a cultural majority, Greek populations, um, populations of people from India, Rohingya, um, Irish, uh, many other different cultural uh, backgrounds um, on a level, um, you'd have a more diverse opportunity for people to enjoy the merits of those different cultures and the strengths that they offer. And we had been aware that um, there's definitely a culture relative to uh, the LGBTQ plus community because uh, for a long time they were stigmatized and isolated culturally from others so that they developed their own internal cultures in a lot of way, which we have found to be enriching in our own um, pride festival and, and other examples. And likewise, we had also talked about the deaf community where they have a language, they have ideas, they see things specific to people um, who view the world without uh, hearing as a primary sense. Um, and we wanted to make sure that they had inclusion in the community, in the cultural connections committee and in government as well. So um, when this ordinance moved forward, it seemed like the ideal time to kind of present both of those as opportunities uh, for the Cultural Connections Committee to enable more people to feel like they have a seat at the table and that they can have representation uh, in city affairs. The motion is to amend. Further discussion on that motion? All the women, Kelly. I have two hands up for effect. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to uh, thank Alderman Lopez for bringing up the additional um, representation for, from the deaf community. And I would say to anyone here, um, if they have additional um, communities that they think should be on this committee, um, please bring them forward because the more representation we have, um, the better we can serve our constituency. So. I'm excited for both this and the LGBTQ members. Anyone else? Seeing none, the motion is to amend. Would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman O'Brien. Yes. Alderman Klee. Yes. Alderman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Dowd. Yes. Alderman Karen. Yes. Alderman Clemens? Yes. Alderman Lopez? Yes. Alderman Tenza? Yes. Alderman Lou? Yes. Alderman Jetty? Yes. Alderman Schmidt? Yes. Alderman Lawn? Yes. Alderman Harriet Gathray? Yes. Alderman Wilshire? Yes. You have 14 yeas and zero nays. That motion carries. Alderman Lopez, do you have a, another motion? Yes, Madam President, I would like to make a motion for a final passage of 02157 as amended. Motion is for final passage as amended. Discussion on that motion. Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman O'Brien. Yes. Alderman Klee. Yes. Alderman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Dow. Yes. Alderman Karen. Yes. Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Tenza. Yes. Alderman Lou. Yes. Alderman Jetty. Yes. Alderman Schmidt. Yes. Alderman Lars? Yes. Alderman Harriet Gathray? Alderman Harriet Gathray? No, it's here. I Alderman... think she left. Thank you. Alderman Wilshire? Yes. You have 13 yeses and zero nays. 
And that motion carries ordinance 2157 is declared duly adopted as amended. New business resolutions. First reading of resolution R21-126, authorizing the mayor to apply for and expend the Community Development Block Grant, CDBG, and Home Investment Partnership Program funds for fiscal year 2022. Additional sponsors, Alderman O'Brien, Alderman Schmidt, Alderman Dowd, Alderman Clee, Alderman Lopez, Alderman Kelly. Alderman Karen. Alderman Karen. Alderman Laws. Alderman Laws. Alderman Harry Gathright. Alderman Harry Gathright and Alderman Tenza. Did I get everyone? And, and myself. Uh, given its first reading, I'll assign that to the Human Affairs Committee. First reading of resolution R21-127, authorizing the mayor and city treasurer to issue bonds not to exceed the amount of $5,408,000 for fiscal year 2021, city's sewer infrastructure program. Additional sponsors, Alderman O'Brien, Alderman Schmidt, Alderman Dowd, Alderman Clee, Alderman Lopez. And Harriet Gathright. And Alderman Harriet Gathright. Okay, given that it's first reading, I'll assign that to the Budget Review Committee, the Board of Public Works, and schedule a special Board of Aldermen public hearing on Monday, April 26, 2021 at 7 p.m. First reading of resolution R21-128, authorizing the mayor and city treasurer to issue bonds not to exceed the amount of $1,550,000 to pay additional costs of the police department's heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system, window improvements, and locker area improvement project. Additional sponsors, Alderman O'Brien, Alderman Schmidt, Alderman Tenza, Alderman Lopez, Alderman Klee, Alderman Karen. Alderman Karen. And Harriet Gathright. And Alderman Harriet Gathright. Given its first reading, I'll assign that to the Budget Review Committee, the Board of Police Commissioners, and schedule a special Board of Aldermen public hearing on Monday, April 26, 2021, at 7 p.m. First reading of Resolution R21-129, relative to the acceptance and appropriation of $1,439,929 from the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development into Public Health and Community Services Grant Activity, Housing Opportunities for Persons with AIDS, HOTWA. Additional sponsors, Alderman Schmidt, Alderman O'Brien, Alderman Dowd, Alderman Lopez, Alderman, Alderman Clay, Karen, Alderman Karen, Alderman Kelly, Maria Gaffrey. Alderman Harry Gathright and myself. Did I miss anyone? Okay, given its first reading, I'll assign that to the Human Affairs Committee. First reading of resolution R21-130, relative to the acceptance and appropriation of up to $220,000 from the State of New Hampshire Department of Health and Human Services into transit grant activity, Federal Transit Authority, FTA operating grant. Additional sponsors, Alderman O'Brien, Alderman Clay, Alderman Kelly, Alderman, 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 Alderman Schmidt, Karen, Alderman Karen, Alderman Lopez, Alderman Dowd. I got you, Alderman Schmidt. You can't I'm put in twice. <laughs> Did I hear someone else? I'm sorry. Gathright. Alderman Harry Gathright and myself. Given its first reading, I'll assign that to the Human Affairs Committee. First reading of resolution R21-131 authorizing the city of Nashua to enter into contracts with Nashua Community College, Riviera University, Town of Hudson, Hudson, the Plus Company, and the Sohegan Valley Transportation Collaborative for transit services. Additional sponsors, Alderman O'Brien, Alderman Dowd, Alderman Lopez, Alderman Kelly, and myself. Sorry, Harry no? Gathright. Alderman Harry Gathright. Given its first reading, I'll assign that to the Budget Review Committee. New business ordinances. First reading of Ordinance 02158, amending the floodplain management land use ordinances. Additional sponsors Alderman O'Brien, Alderman Schmidt, Alderman Harriet Gathright, Alderman Clee. Is that everybody? 
given its first reading. I'll assign that to the Planning and Economic Development Committee, the NASA Planning Board and schedule a public hearing for Tuesday, May 4th, 2021 at 7 p.m. First reading of ordinance 02159, authorizing a right turn only lane on Amherst Street to Cotton Road Connector. Additional sponsors, Alderman O'Brien, Alderman Clee, Alderman Schmidt, <laughs> Alderman here at Gathright. Anyone else? Given Alderman its Clemens. Alderman Clemens, okay. Given its first reading, I'll assign that to the Committee on Infrastructure. First reading of Alderman Wilshire. I'm sorry. Yes. I, I tried to pipe in before. I was just wanted to inquire why 021058 wasn't also going to the Conservation Committee. It it can go to the Conservation Commission. We can, we just, can send it there. We talk about floodplains all the time. So don't, I was just yeah, we can send it there. Know. Okay, thank you. Thank you. First reading of Ordinance 02160. No parking at certain times and no on street student drop off or pick up on sections of Cleveland Street. Additional sponsors Alderman O'Brien. And I will co sponsor that as well. I think it's important to uh, make sure that's taken care of. Okay, given it, anyone else? Given its first reading, I'll assign that to the Committee on Infrastructure. Period for general public comment. Again, I will ask anyone from the public if they'd like to speak, give your name and address for the record and you have a three minute um, window. Anyone? Yes, hi, my hands Laurie up. Ortolano. Yeah, Lori Ortolano, 41 Berkeley Street. A couple of things quickly. Um, a little while ago, I talked um, to this board and I think the um, finance committee about getting an update from Vision on um, the commercial residential property um, um, you know, assessment rate that we're potentially looking at for 2022 and the vacancy rate for these commercial properties, mostly to understand if there's gonna be a burden shift from uh, commercial properties onto residential. And, I'm, and I think there's been some recovery here, but um, Vision has collected one year of commercial sales data and would have some vacancy information. And I, I would like to have them talk to us and give us some input because I've received a number of calls from seniors who have asked me to ask this board to consider and take a look at the elderly tax exemption. You did this in 2018 um, and you ended up having to phase it in when there was uh, an increase in um, the um, assessments because of the market. Um, there was a pretty big outcry from seniors to get more assistance. And I suspect in 2022, you're going to see the same thing. And I'm not weighing in one way or another about what the right thing to do is here, but it would be good now to look at what other communities have done with these uh, increases in the real estate market and how they're addressing their exemptions. We have a generous exemption, but I think seniors have a good point who are saying address it now so that we don't get stuck in this phase in plan that happened in 2022 and, um, and be a little proactive, but let's understand where we're going with this um, situation with the new update. Um, I also would like, and I wrote, a, I think a letter to the board, I can't recall if I did. I would really like to encourage um, the um, mayor to set up um, a class with vision to do a little camera review with us. It was something that was supposed to be done with KRT and it was canceled, but some workshop where the public could learn more about modeling, how it's done, what data they use off your property record card and allow some questions or put out you know, a video um, before, the, um, before the update's done. And the um, last thing is I'm not a proponent of maintaining that right to know position that was recently hired in the budget. I, I don't feel it's done what it should do to meet the needs of the public. And I, you know, I understand there's no legal obligation to be civil or polite or work with the public. And, but I do think, um, you know, municipal government has an obligation to try to do that. And, and I think that hasn't happened. And um, I was very leery of having that position be part of the legal office because it intertwines with other legal issues. And that's exactly what happened. Um, and I don't think that that position should be maintained. I, I think it's really been very poorly handled and I'm really disappointed with it. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to give public comment? 
Alicia Houston. Name and address for the record, please. Alicia Houston, 139 Westwood Drive. Um, I had some questions um, or actually comments on, you know, the current standing, as many of you know, uh, with regards to the education community and how that is impacting the local economic levels. Um, my understanding is that uh, Mayor Donchus is aware of the 860 students that we were missing as of October. Um, and the, I, I think that my comment is specific to, you know, really creating an understanding perhaps for the, the older men and older women uh, who may not be aware that there were uh, three and soon to be four different levels of CARES Act funding um, that was sent specifically to the districts um, under ESSER 1, ESSER 2, uh, the American Relief Program, and then ESSER 3 should be rolling out soon as well. Um, so I think that as a community, because we've seen what the closures of schools look like in an effort to be more proactive, uh, I think that it would be extremely beneficial for us to look at, you know, what is the city budget uh, and how do we incorporate, you know, some of the educational pieces to support the education system because such a large portion of our taxes really go towards the education system. And I know that there have been a lot of parents uh, and, and residents and taxpayers within the Nashua community who have voiced concerns about having another tax increase um, as a result of, you know, this was a horrific pandemic uh, and no one could have expected it. However, um, our schools remained vacant for, you know, over a year, essentially. Um, so I think that, you know, given the community standpoint, that is one of the big concerns that I would definitely encourage any alderman or alderwoman uh, to communicate directly with the Board of Education uh, and with, you know, the with the mayor and really create a cohesive approach so that we can be more proactive going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to uh, make comments? Seeing no one, uh, remarks by members of the board. Alderman Schmidt. Thank you, I never get called on first. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am so grateful that Director Kleiner brought us that video and gave us the information about what's happening at City Hall. I've had questions from people who were wondering when things are going to be done, what's happening, who's doing it, and this, this is just perfect. Uh, motor, motor vehicle department's going to be opening uh, next Monday. Uh, city clerk is going up and assessing is almost complete and it's beautiful. It's clean, it's safe. Uh, I'm, I'm just so pleased and I can't thank you enough. Uh, um, I, have, I have had one more question. Um, I had a question about when the um, health department is going to phase out the mask requirement on their part. And I know that this is information that we certainly can't um, we can't make any decision on this. We don't have enough information right now, but I'd like them to know that people are requesting it. And it is a, a very, um, very stressful issue for a lot of people. That's all I needed to say. Thank you very much. I have next uh, Alderman Cleese. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, I, I'd like to echo, um, Alderman Schmidt's uh, comments about the renovations at City Hall. Um, I, I really appreciated getting the, um, the, the walkthrough, I guess you would call it. Um, it very impressive looking, um, very professional looking, and um, I love the upgrade to it. Um, I'd also wanna um, send out my condolences to the family of the Nashua student who um, lost his life uh, recently. And I want to, um, praise the city of Nashua. On Saturday, I, I had a um, cleanup of Lock Street and some of the surrounding streets and uh, there were 10 volunteers that showed up. Uh, two of them came from Ward 1, one of them came from Ward 4, and the rest were from Ward 3, French Hill and, and, and so on. Um, it, it's exciting. I mean, 
I always figure that my ward will be right there to help clean up and so on. But to have someone come in from um, Ward 1 and Ward 4 was just quite impressive. It, it speaks volumes for our city. Um, Public Works was incredible. Um, they donated uh, the blue bags for us to, to pick things up with um, and some very nice work gloves as well. Um, Director Photo stepped up. Um, Parks and Rec were right there. They were picking up the blue bags as we were filling them. They came at the end of the, um, the day to Foster Square and got um, the bags. We filled over 30 bags. Um, mostly just Lock Street, a little bit of Lowell, uh, a little bit of Canal and so on. We're going to do this again. Um, I'm hoping for October 25th and I will put out uh, information. I've gotten a lot of positive feedback from the residents. They were really happy to see us out there and doing this. And um, uh, I was proud to do it. And we had a beautiful day on Saturday. So um, I, I suggest others who wanna do this, just get a group together and start picking up trash. And one person said, I thought was quite funny. They, she was singing um, butts, butts and poo, I think was the song that she was singing because that's what she kept picking up. But then she did tell me there were more butts on the ground than there were poo. So I'm not sure that's a necessarily good thing, but we were picking up cigarette butts too. It's a lot of back work picking up cigarette butts, but uh, um, we were successful. Thank you so much. Alderwoman Kelly. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I have a few things to make some comments on. First, I would like to thank everyone for uh, passing the Affordable Housing Fund. I'm really looking forward to the continued work on that. Um, as a uh, downtown business owner, I've had the pleasure of watching uh, downtown come alive with our barriers. They look fantastic. And I know that was a request from the community last year. I'm sorry, from the community last year. Um, and so it, it really looks great. Uh, positive street art um, and Beyond Borders, I believe. Um, have, I've met both of them and they've, they've done a great job. Um, and the only other piece that I had um, was I wanted to thank everyone who was in attendance this evening and gave public comment. I thought we uh, did a great job of um, being, being civil and, and having some just straightforward conversation, whether we agree or not. I know that hasn't always been happening on other city uh, meetings, and I would like to implore everyone to come and share their, um, their ideas. That makes us stronger, but let's do it civilly. Thank you. Thank you. Alvin Lopez. Yep, um, so uh, in reference to Alderman Schmidt's comments, um, I did announce at our last Alderman meeting that <clears throat> I had asked the Board of Health to start reviewing uh, the masking ordinance so that they could figure out exactly how it would be appropriate to take it down. Um, in light of today's uh, announcement in New Hampshire that the Johnson & Johnson vaccination uh, is being suspended, there are a lot of complications when it comes to when we're ready to safely remove the mask. Um, as most people are, have probably begun reading, um, I have a number of constituents and um, associates who have actually managed to catch COVID after being inoculated. It is not 100% protection. Um, the more exposure you have, the more likely you are to challenge your immune response and your and contract it. The vaccine, the, what the vaccine does do is it allows you to have a lighter and uh, less intensive uh, COVID infection. It can prevent hospitalization in most cases, but you can still definitely transport it. Um, so these are things we need to be cautious of. Uh, they're, they're basically what explains the surge. Um, it's also worth reminding to people um, that we don't have any vaccinations for children at all. Um, the testing has to be completed for them before we're sure that it's safe to do it. And there's a whole ICD index now on COVID related um, conditions. and. I know that's not what people wanna hear, but COVID doesn't necessarily go away without leaving scarring and marks. There's increasing awareness in the public health field of uh, neurological issues, including more acute emotional um, experiences. You can develop uh, mood disorders uh, that you may not have been uh, susceptible to before um, and brain fro fog and cognitive issues. So this is still a very new illness. It's only been around for about a year and a half. Um, so we need to be cautious. And I think our Board of Health needs the support of the aldermen uh, in making sure that when we talk about masking ordinances, we are talking about 
a decision that is safe, not necessarily popular for the city of Nashua, because we were on the front lines when this was blowing up in Boston and Massachusetts. We have managed to maintain a very safe and effective um, response to it. We've managed to protect our businesses to the extent that some of the efforts that we've made to allow them to survive COVID have turned out to be wildly successful, such as the, um, the downtown um, outside dining. So we need to be able to give them the ability to be healthcare practitioners and make recommendations that are informed. Um, I have asked them to identify specific criteria that could be used, such as exposure rate, um, number of people vaccinated, and, and those kind of things. Um, so that discussion will be 12:30 tomorrow. Um, it's on the city's webpage, and I think we've all gotten emails about it. Um, additionally, with regards to the barriers, um, I'm sorry to Alderman Clee for not helping her with her cleanup. I was actually in the middle of volunteering slash segueing in circles around positive street art while they were painting. Um, and they are doing an outstanding job. Um, and I think it looks really, really good. Um, I have heard from some uh, businesses that they would have liked to have some direct input uh, on the designs that were going right in front of their business. And because the backsides of the um, barriers haven't been painted, those, the idea was we could do those future years, um, they would have preferred a decoration. So talk to the mayor, I talked to Director Cummings, they're both uh, supportive of the idea of those restaurants reaching out to Positive Street Art and contracting the um, artist directly to do a more customized uh, look on the inside. Um, that's up to the restaurants. If they want to pay for that, that's fine. Um, I think the city has been more than supportive in, in what it has already uh, contributed to. And I think the barriers really need to get up. The best thing you can do for a business right now as the weather starts to get warmer is get people sitting in your seats and, and using your services in a, in a safe way. So um, that's very encouraging. Uh, people have, had, have given me a lot of positive feedback about that. Um, not exactly uh, as positive a feedback as the bulldozer that's parked in the former Alex Shoe Store site. Um, I don't. I think people imagined that we were going to like drape a giant blanket over that and then pull it back, and there would suddenly be a performing arts center. Um, and it was a little uh, heartbreaking for people who were have family history or memories attached to Miller's to watch the uh, the front loader scraping away at the uh, Alex Shoe Store uh, sign. So. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's demolition, it's change, it's frustrating. Um, but the promise that we have ahead of us and the, the project that's moving forward uh, is very exciting. Um, as are other projects that are happening downtown, there's a lot of development that's happening uh, from local businesses. We have the soup kitchens project. We have uh, additional housing projects coming online. So there's a lot of really good and interesting things happening downtown. So I guess in, um, just to conclude, I would remind people to be careful in driving downtown. It's not Daniel Webster Highway. Um, we don't wanna have more car accidents and people injured. So just be mindful of pedestrians. And if you are looking for a more rapid and direct route to get over the bridge, consider the Broad Street Parkway. Thank you. Alderman Harry Gathright. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I too want to um, echo the sentiments of our mayor to the family of the 17 year old, which I'm sure is very difficult for them, but just to let them know that, you know, we as a city really are standing with them. And secondly, um, I didn't speak to the 1.5 mil that's going to the fire department, but I did sit in on that meeting. I wasn't on a meeting when, um, Deputy Chief uh, Buxton spoke to that. And um, it was kind of weird how we couldn't, or we couldn't actually just pay them directly. We had to go through the health department, you know, in order to pay the firemen that work um, in giving out the vaccinations and in directing traffic and all the many things that they do for the city. So I just want to acknowledge that um, they do a lot. And I've been in the lines for vaccination at one point and um, really got a, a really good look at some of the things that they do there. So I just want them to know and for the community to know uh, the work that they do beyond their regular firemen's work, let's put it that way. So um, kudos to them. And secondly, thirdly, 
uh, my question probably is to corporate counsel because I listened to comments about the Board of Education. And I think for me, I just need clarity on something. Um, I, For me, I thought the Board of Education is the Board of Education, we're the Board of Aldermen. And I know we kind of oversee the city. Do we oversee the Board of Education? Because I do know that the Board of Education has a council as well. So I'm, I don't want to get us into the thing of, the Board of Education experiences coming into the Board of Aldermen. So with that said, that's my question to corporate counsel, you know, where does that stand? Because that can become very ugly, like the Board of Education. Well, let, me, let me correct one thing. Uh, just like all city departments, my office represents the school department and the Board of Education. Uh, as well. Uh, so yes, uh, for some matters, they've engaged outside counsel on occasion, but uh, we do represent them and that does take a uh, considerable amount of our time and effort. Uh, there are issues for which this board, the Board of Aldermen, uh, has to defer to the decision-making of the Board of Education. Uh, school curriculum, school policies, the school calendar, the uh, hiring of a superintendent, the approving the superintendent's choices for other administrative and teaching positions. Uh, while members of the Board of Aldermen can weigh in on those decisions, just like any other of our citizens, this board cannot overrule decisions of the Board of Education in those areas. Um, but you do set the budget. And uh, it is possible to exert influence in that manner. Uh, so that's, that's the situation in a nutshell. Uh, very briefly, there are nuances. And if a specific question were to arise on a specific issue, we could look into that specifically and provide an answer as uh, circumstances arise. Okay. Thank you. You have answered my question because um, that was the other thing. Could we override? I know about the budget, but on whatever decisions the Board of Ed makes, we as a Board of Aldermen cannot override that. Did I understand that correctly? That's generally true on school related matters. Yes, yes. school related matters. Thank you. Okay. Well said, Alderman Gaffrey. Yes, thank you so much. You're welcome. Alderman Clements. Uh, thank you, um, Madam President. I uh, just wanted to reiterate something that I've said in the past, uh, and that is that I admire all of our city employees, um, and in particular, uh, our city attorney's office. I think you do a wonderful job, and I think folks who unfortunately have the other opinion or a different opinion um, might have one because of some biases, but I certainly think that you serve our uh, citizens well, you serve us well, and uh, keep up the good work. Thank you. Anyone else? Alderman Dow. I just a couple quick things. One, the one additional note I'd make of the relationship to budget with the school department is we have bottom line budget authority, but once we give them the money from the budget, they have autonomy on how to spend it. Um, so, um, you always reiterate that during the budget season. Uh, uh, so the other thing is uh, last week, the mayor had a special event outside city hall, recognizing all the work that the public health uh, department has done to uh, support the city, especially during the pandemic. And uh, 
it was a very nice uh, uh, recognition for all of those workers who were there. Um, also, uh, we have now received the AOT permit, that's alteration of terrain permit from the state of New Hampshire. So and a truck middle school uh, construction will be moving out very smartly, uh, probably tomorrow or Thursday. Um, while we were waiting for the AOT, the contractor had to leave to do some other job and they'll be back. Um, also on, on 021060 uh, on the Cleveland Street, um, those signs and, and requirements have been approved by the uh, Department of Public Works uh, and just, it, but it needed legislation to put the signs up in the, in the right of way. And those are all for safety, safety of the students. Uh, so um, we'll be addressing those in infrastructure. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, uh, committee announcements. No committee meetings. Alderman <laughs> Kelly. I never get to do because it's always like three weeks out. So it's like, oh, uh, <laughs> the Human Affairs Committee will have a second meeting for the um, for the month on um, this upcoming Monday at 7 p.m. There'll be a public hearing as well. OK, anyone else? Committee announcements? Alderman Dowd. I mean, Alderman O'Brien. Sorry. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, just to remind everybody, uh, tomorrow night, is the uh, Penetrek Special Water Commission meeting at 7 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, seeing none, Alderman O'Brien. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to make the motion that the April 13th, 2021 meeting of the Board of Aldermen be adjourned by roll call. You've heard the motion. Would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman O'Brien. Yes. Alderman Clee. Yes. Alderwoman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Dowd. Yes. Alderman Karen. Yes. Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Tenza. Yes. Alderwoman Lou. Yes. Alderman Jetty. Yes. Alderman Schmidt. Yes. Alderman Laws. Yes. Alderman Cleaver. Excuse me. Alderman Harriet Gathery. Yes. Alderman Wilshire. Yes. You have 14 yeas and zero nays. And that motion carries. We are adjourned at 9.02 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Great Thank meeting. Everyone. Good, Good night. night. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a nice Bye -bye. week.